So, in the last uh, video, we looked at linear systems and how you know the phase space picture can give us some very nice qualitative insights. Right. So, then we define we defined a general linear system and we also looked at how to solve the uh, dynamics, the equations for a linear system in general. Right. But so let us look at how you know the general theory of linear systems works and how with the help of these just these two constants tau and delta, we are looking at 2 by 2 systems at this point. So, with the help of just the trace and determinant of the matrix A, which what we called A last time, you can actually tell you know the nature of the qualitative dynamics already comes out. Okay, so the general problem we have is x dot equal to ax plus by and y dot equal to cx plus dy and we have seen that the eigenvalues of this matrix a, b, c, d are just given by lambda 1 and lambda 2 where lambda 1 can be written in terms of tau and delta, lambda 2 also can be written in terms of tau and delta like here. So, the inverse relation of course is tau is nothing but lambda 1 plus lambda 2 and delta equal to lambda 1 times lambda 2. So, the observations we make are the following, right? Whenever delta is less than 0, then both the eigenvalues have to be real and with opposite sign, right? So, for the moment, let us let us treat, uh, you know, lambda 1 and lambda 2 to be real. But I mean, in general, of course, a, b, c, d are completely, um, you know, random real numbers. Even if they are all real, it is not necessary that lambda 1 and lambda 2 have to have to be real. So, then of course, you will see later on that it can be extended. These ideas can, will go, go through even if for arbitrary, you know, complex lambda 1 and lambda 2. For now, let us just think of what happens if lambda 1 and lambda 2 are real, right? If, if delta is less than 0, then lambda, uh, both of them have to be real and with opposite signs. Hence, the fixed point is guaranteed to be a saddle point. So, you know, what happens in a saddle point? So, once again, I am using the notion of a fixed point without having defined it, but I think it is intuitively clear that what we are doing is that we are looking at the dynamics around the origin, right? For a linear system of this kind, the origin is always a fixed point. A fixed point is one where the dynamics basically is, uh, there is no dynamics. If you are if you're stuck at the origin, you will be there forever. But the question is, if you happen to move slightly away from the origin, will you return to the fixed point or will you run away or will you selectively return to it if you are taking certain special direction, right? If it is a saddle point, it means that one of these eigenvalues involved, lambda 1 is going to be positive and the other one is negative. So, if it is the negative eigenvalue will tend to bring it towards the origin and the positive one will tend to take it away from the, the origin and this is what is called a saddle point. If delta is greater than 0, so basically if delta is less than 0, it does not matter what where tau is, it is always going to be a saddle point. But on the other hand, if delta is greater than 0, then uh, we have a range of possibilities. So, now of course, yeah, now it depends on the precise value of tau. You can have real or I complex or whatever. If delta is less than 0, then for sure you are in fact you are guaranteed that lambdas are going to be real, right? And they are going to have, so that comes from just looking at lambda 1 and lambda 2, right? So, that is what that is the case we already considered. If delta is, is less than 0, then tau squared minus 4 delta is also going to be, is, is necessarily positive, right? So, basically lambda 1 and lambda 2 will be, one of them is positive and the other is negative, that is for sure. And if delta is greater than 0, then you, depending upon tau, you may have lambda 1 and lambda to be complex conjugates of each other or they may be real, right? If tau squared is greater than 4 delta, then the eigenvalues are real and therefore the point, the fixed point is a node, right? A node is where, you know, your, it can be a stable node or an unstable node, we will come to that in a moment. A, a node is where, you know, in, in both the directions, the system is basically behaving in the same way. It is both, uh, both the directions are trying to bring it towards the origin or away from the origin. We will discuss in a, in a moment. On the other hand, if tau squared is less than 4 delta, then the eigenvalues are complex, conjugates of each other and then the fixed point can become either a, a center or a spiral. What that means, we will see in a moment. We have already seen a center. Spiral, we will see some examples of that. So, if you have, so this is a compact way of representing this. 
So if you, um, so along the y axis you have tau and along the x axis is delta. So if tau squared minus 4 delta is, is equal to 0, you are sitting on this parabola and if you are in, inside this parabola, then you have, you know, depending upon whether you are tau is positive or negative, you will have unstable or stable spirals for sure. And if, if you are beyond this parabola and depending upon whether you are above, you know, in the positive, for positive delta t, you will get unstable nodes and for negative delta, uh, neg negative tau, for positive tau, you get unstable nodes and for negative tau, you get stable nodes, right. So, this is the theory. Now, we want to see whether you can use this theory to understand some examples. So, let us look at some very simple examples first and then we will go to Strogatz Romeo-Juliet problem, right. So, let, now let us investigate what happens for x dot equal to y, y dot equal to minus 2x minus 3y. So, tau is just simply minus 3 in this case and delta is just 2, you can quickly calculate it. And so, the expectation is what? So, since delta is positive and tau is uh, negative, we should look at tau squared minus 4 delta. Tau squared is 9 minus, uh, 9 minus 8 is 1. So, you have tau squared minus 4 delta is, is, is positive and so, the expectation that is that it is going to be stable node. So, let us see what that means when I use, use stream plot. So, you see that it is stable. So, you see that all curves are basically coming towards the origin and and it is a node, right. It is, uh, you know, along both the, 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 the directions. So, the directions in this case turn out to be like very sort of close to each other and that is why it seems a bit uh, messy this figure, but basically it is just that both the directions are attractive in nature and so the all these trajectories will just take you to the origin. Now, let us look at another example. We have phi, x dot equal to 5x plus 10y, y dot equal to minus x minus y. Now, your tau is 4 and delta is 5. So, tau squared 16 minus 20 minus 4. So, this is going to be, since it is negative, you have a um, and your delta is positive. So, the theory tells us that we should look for an unstable spiral, right. Let us see what that means. So, the unstable spiral. So, you see that there is, yeah, so it is an unstable spiral. It is not very clear on this scale. Maybe you should zoom it out a little more and then you will see that, you know, your, there is a con continuous loss of energy in an unstable spiral and then it will keep on. Uh, going away. So, one thing that is clear, uh, evident here is of course that solutions tend to run away from the origin. It is unstable in both the directions and it is it's not going to just go in, you know, monotonically. It is going to keep circling around this and then it will going to spiral away to infinity. That is what is an unstable spiral. Let us look at the familiar example of the damped harmonic oscillator, right. So, the differential equation is and from within this theory, right. We all know how to solve this. We have looked at this from multiple directions. We have also looked at how to solve this numerically with RK4 and, you know, even simpler methods like Euler and improved Euler and all this. Now, let us see how to analyze this from this general linear theory point of view. So, mx double dot plus dx dot plus kx equal to 0. Now, of course, we want to bring it into this vector form, canonical form x dot equal to v and v dot is equal to you know, the linear combination of x and v in this manner. So, we can rewrite this as, you know, exactly in the form we had earlier and from where we can extract the tau and delta. Tau of this trace is just nothing but the trace of a which is minus b by m and delta is equal to determinant of a which is k by m. So, we immediately see that a center is possible only if b equal to 0, right. Why is that? A center, for a center to happen, we have seen that your uh, tau must be 0, right. And so, and that is the case where you have a frictional, frictionless system and that is the simple harmonic oscillator. But if B is non-zero, there is going to be, you know, the, no energy conservation. You can have a fixed point which is going to be certainly not a neutral fixed point. We will see that there are three different cases which, which arise, you know, where, because for sure you have to be, your delta is, is positive, right. So, it does, there is no way for you to tune your delta to be negative because you have a mass and a, this constant k which is sitting on the right hand side and both of these are necessarily positive quantities unless 
you have some weird spring where you have you know with a negative k which is very very unphysical but maybe there is a way to artificially set up such a system but we are not really going there right so k is definitely a positive quantity for all genuinely practical purposes so we'll take k to be positive and then delta is guaranteed to be positive so there is no question of a saddle node for for these kinds of systems so the only thing to decide is whether you are inside the parabola or outside the parabola or if you are on the boundary if you are on the boundary you get this borderline case which is called a degenerate node and which is what is called critically damped motion so we see that uh, you know the physics of damped uh, motion critically damped under damped so it is under damped if you are uh, if b squared is less than 4 km and the eigenvalues are imaginary they are conjugate uh, imaginary eigenvalues and if b squared is greater than 4 km the eigenvalues are real and there is a mixture of growing and decaying motion but with no oscillatory motion right so the it's over damped motion and there's continuous loss of energy and just there is not enough time for the system to execute even one oscillation so the damping is so heavy that it will keep on falling down and then it will eventually go to the get up gets absorbed by the uh, into the origin right which means that it comes to rest okay so this is once again it is useful to look at the stream plot of this and so you see that depending upon uh, so what have i got here my minus x minus 2 y well i have chosen some particular values of this so this is something that you should play you should play with different possibilities for b by m k by m tau and delta and see for yourself that you know all these three uh, cases which are familiar territory but now from a, uh, an alternate perspective that's that's going to be an exercise for you to carry on let's move on and let's look at this one another variant of this romeo julio pro, uh, juliet problem of Strogatz, right? So, R dot equal to AR plus B times J and J dot equal to CR plus DJ. This is the most general linear system of Romeo Julio that you can come up with. But suppose you take a, a symmetric case where C equal to B and D equal to A and furthermore we take A to be negative and B to be positive. So, basically this is what uh, he calls cautious lovers. So, if they see reciprocation, so then they have a tendency to respond positively but on the other hand if they are reluctant to go too far because they are afraid that they may get get hurt if they are already showing a lot of love then they want to be cautious so this is the relationship and then you can ask what happens what is the fate of this relationship so you write down the matrix so a is negative and b is positive so the matrix is just you know like here so all we have to do is uh, find out tau and delta trace is just 2a and the crucial thing is that 2a is less than 0 that we should keep in mind and delta is a squared minus b squared so tau squared minus 4 delta is 4 b squared right so this we know is an important quantity if tau squared minus 4 delta is greater than 0 or less than 0 or equal to 0 you can have different kinds of physics which comes about so this means that the fixed point can be either be a saddle point if delta is negative right if delta is negative then you don't even have to look at what tau is if delta is negative what does it mean it means that a squared is less than b squared and um, then you are not too cautious right if a squared is less than b squared then perhaps it's good for the relationship so let's see how that plays out in a moment but on the other hand if uh, if a squared is greater than b squared if delta is positive then you get a stable no right so let's look at uh, the stream plots of both of these cases so you can convince yourself of this by looking at these equations for a moment and imposing the condition that a is negative so that's an important condition so let's see what happens in the first case so you have a saddle node if delta is negative i have chosen delta to be negative here and then what happens is basically they are not so cautious so in this case you can depending upon the initial conditions it can you know take you to the uh, to a very high positive value right both x and y so in this case uh, r and j right uh, r is along i think the x axis and j is along the y axis it doesn't matter you, you can check this so you will find that 
in the first quadrant, if you are along any of these initial conditions such that you will be attracted towards the R equal to J line, that is a happy sign for the relationship. Basically what it means that it is going to keep on increasing value and they are going to have a love fest of some kind. But on the other hand, if you are, uh, if you are um, initial conditions are somewhere in this region, in the uh, second quadrant or in the, uh, um, sorry, in the third quadrant or in the fourth quadrant, then you can basically get attracted towards R equal to, uh, R equal to J, but in the negative direction. And so that means that you have very large negative values of, you know, both these uh, feelings of both of them will be very large negative numbers. Of course, if you happen to be on this very special line, you know, y equal to minus x, then it is just going to come down to the origin and then the, the, the relationship will fall apart. But in general, you see that this relationship is, has an explosive nature to it. It can be, depending upon the initial conditions, it can be like really heavily positive or heavily negative. That is one type of solution which is possible. And the other type of solution which is possible is this one, which is, uh, which is kind of a sad thing, which is like when they are too cautious, you know, over caution is apparently a bad thing. If A is large, right, if A is large, then your delta is going to be positive and that is not so good for this relationship. It is going to become a stable node. So no matter where you start, it is going to fizzle out and then eventually both R and J will just go to 0, right, it is an unhappy end to this relationship. Okay, so you should play with these coefficients a, b, c, d, right, you know these parameters rather of this model and see if you can come up with more interesting uh, possibilities and think about, you know, creative ways of building on this model and, and play more. Okay, thank you.